this. I wanted to, to talk about maybe three things. One, um, we were discussing this as a the translation as a, uh, a way to learn to write, perhaps. And for me, I would say that translation is, uh, is really ingrained in my perhaps sense of identity. And uh, I want to read this passage from an essay that I recently published that sort of tries to uh, address these things through a, through a story. Uh, in December 1988, in my last year in college, I traveled for a week to New York and took Lorca's poet in New York with me. I realized that narcissism implied in the sentence, <laughs> but I'd been carrying the book with me for months at, the time, at that time. And while on Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn, a day or so later, in an Arab grocery store, I found some books of Mahmoud Darwish. Back in the room where I was staying, I'd read, I'd read a poem by Lorca and put it aside, read some Darwish and translate it into English, and then went back to Lorca and so on. In between, I wrote some of my own lines. I didn't know Spanish, but I could read Lorca out loud for cadence in the original. And there was Darwish's Arabic and my own version of his poetry in English. I had four floods of poetry coming at me, and what I put down was perhaps an extent expression or an extension of the whirlpool they created in me. Translating Darwish was also a sentimental education. As a political refugee at the time, I was uncertain about where I'd end up or where I wanted to be, and I was aware that I'd been gone too long, that the link between my upbringing and my early adulthood had many gaps, which were the only place I could exist. Americans are now more aware of the difficulties faced by immigrants from my region, but back in the 1980s, Arab bashing was gratuitous. Well, it still is in some ways. That went along with the Reagan administration's practices of global racism, support of South Africa's apartheid, numerous wars in Africa, persecution of Palestinians, and the funding of the murderous regimes of Central America. Who would stay in a country like that if he had a choice? In the old days, one would call this state alienation, political, social, and cultural. In my early romantic view of poetry, such alienation can take the poet a long way. Privileged with, it, with or disadvantaged by alienation, as the case may be, what I found interesting about Lorca's poet in New York was his delirious anger against the modernity machine, an Andalusian he was so enraptured and frightened by New York that he turned the city into a theater where an ancient nightmarish vision of Dante's Inferno met surrealism, where folk mythology fused with a modern underworld creeping up the skyscrapers. In Poet in New York, Lorca confronts what Garcia Marquez called a reality that is in itself out of all proportion. In that case, realism or the lyric voice grounded in a shared knowledge was not appropriate. Lorca needed an athletic imagination to protect himself from being dissolved and sent streaming down the many drains that populate the poems in that book. I mean, Lorca being a, an immigrant in New York uh, was, was the great link uh, for me. Now, having rooted my practice in translation, having identified myself perhaps in some ways as a, a, a person living in translation, uh, and that being a, 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 a source feeding my, my sense of self, perhaps a, a creativity, uh, translation came to uh, also uh, save me in, another, in other ways. At home in Libya, after years of living away, 20 years away, and in the enigmatic state of arrival, I spent my first day in the banal world of funeral wakes, where customary words such as Azana Wahid are repeated among the attendees. Azana Wahid, Azana Wahid. The phrase is repeated to me a thousand times, seriously and its meaning buried in the automatic perception of ritualized utterance where heartfelt sentiment dies. Azana Wahid means our grief is one. Our grief is one. 
during the noisy, nonchalant gatherings of my father's funeral in Libya, only in translation in my English did the word the, the words our grief is one mean anything to me. I culled that meaning from mouth that did not mean to touch me so deeply, and it was translation that allowed me to leap like a endoscope lens, endoscopic lens into the mourner's hearts to seek the solace I needed. Proof again that identities are made or scooped or dug, never quite passed on or given. And that effort into reading the words beyond the words, people said the quiet probing of what my countrymen were trying to tell me and my need to translate them was how I began to seek my return, a place home again. I think in a, a, a translation is, a, it's again, narcissism is important. Uh, you look at the mirror and what you get as a as narcissist, somebody looks like you but is not quite like you. So you look again, you look over there, look again. And, and that's, that's the translator's sort of narcissistic experience. It, it's never going to, to match. Uh, but maybe after looking at, at, at these different faces that appear, you say, actually, I have a decent face. Uh, I, I'll go with it. Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, 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 but, but I think um, people hear things differently. Uh, the, the Arabic has about 18 metrical feet that are not the same as, as English. Uh, so... Um, uh, if if the if, if if the poem is metrical to begin with, if it is free verse, um, then uh, you know what do you match there? For me, I I try to read the line by line sometimes, and I just say, How, does that sound close enough? Are there enough uh, stresses in the line? Is this a three stress line in Arabic? Can this be a three stress line in English? And sometimes it doesn't match. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, uh, and then, and then I think when I was speaking of musicality, well, my musical reference is, is uh, for American languages is, uh, is uh, in many ways is still is the blues. When, when if there's, particularly if there's repetition of the poem, and sometimes you have Arabic being a line being repeated, and the blues never repeats the line exactly the same. And I feel like if I repeat the line exactly the same, it would not hit that interesting note in English, which is to tinker with it a little bit. So these are some of the liberties that are stray from the text towards perhaps an authenticity. I mean, you, you, you leave the, the literal to, to a different uh, essence or, or, or authenticity. But uh, these are all, to me, uh, on the spot uh, uh, moments, uh, the, like, the, like you are playing a score. Uh, and in the same way that you don't translate the same poem, uh, uh, you don't cross the same river twice, you don't translate the same poem the same way each time. Yeah, I think that.